I'd like to begin this evening with a prayer which Archbishop Fulton Sheen wrote for the University of St. Thomas specifically back in 1947 when the university was founded. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. O God, who desirest that all men should come to the knowledge of the truth, and to this end did enlighten the world with the wonderful learning of St. Thomas Aquinas, mercifully grant that this university dedicated to his name may be a seat of wisdom to the young, a mother of good counsel to the community, a blessing to all its benefactors. And as thy eternal truth did become flesh and dwell amongst us, so may that same truth become action in all thy students, that they may think the things that are right, and under thy merciful guidance perform the same, through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. We are fortunate to have with us this evening Dr. Lewis and Mrs. Alicia Varela. They will be speaking, of course, on Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. Dr. Varela is a native Houstonian. He's a Houston physician, entrepreneur, and business leader. He received his degree in pre-med here at the University of St. Thomas in 1971 to 1974. He then went on to Creighton University in Omaha where he received his degree in medicine and where at the University Hospital he did his internship. He also received radiotherapy internship here at MD Anderson. He served in the Army both in the Vietnam era, uh, 1969 to 1970, and again during uh, Operation Desert Storm, where uh, he did physicals at Fort Hood. He, he has, he's retired from the Army, but he has the uh, office of captain. From the 1980s through to the present, the Varellas have been active in medical practice here in Houston. Dr. Varela is founder or co-founder of General Practices Associates, Northwest Park Doctors Clinic, MedPsych Services, which deals with uh, chronic pain management for cancer victims, Houston International Medical Network, which provides uh, emergency medical evacuations for the critically ill, MedPsych Administrative Services, International Sleep Labs of America, and Texas Ambulatory Surgical Center Society. He has also been administrator of Midtown Surgical Center. In 2005, he retired from active medical practice and has been devoting himself in part since then to the promotion of the cause for sainthood of Archbishop Sheen. He's a member of the Knights of Columbus, of the Knight of the Equestrian, he's a Knight of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, Chairman of the Board until 2013 of the Fulton John Sheen Foundation. He serves as a medical volunteer at Casa Juan Diego. Last week we had a presentation by Mr. and Mrs. Zwick, who are directors there. Uh, he's been a medical missionary to Guatemala. He also serves as a volunteer to San Jose Clinic. And he's a full member of the Marian Servant of the Incarnate Wisdom. Mrs. Varela also received her undergraduate degree here at the University of St. Thomas. In fact, they met in Welder Hall. <laughs> she received her real estate license in 1992 um, and became a real estate professional agent, both for sellers and for buyers. 
She also is an entrepreneur. She developed a uh, management company which has as its sole client her husband. And <laughs> that long list of uh, businesses that he has founded. Uh, she's been engaged in much volunteer work, both at their uh, local parish of St. Ignatius. Uh, she's on the board of directors of Sending Out Servants, Servants a Catholic lay missionary agency. Uh, she too is a member of the Houston chapter of Marian Servants of the Incarnate Wisdom. She's on the board of directors of the Archbishop Fulton John Sheen Foundation. And like her husband, she too is a certified spiritual director. I give you Dr. and Mrs. Farella. Good evening and welcome to everyone here. Um, first of all, I would like, my wife and I would like to give thanks uh, first to God then to the University of St. Thomas and uh, to the Department of Theology, um, Dr. Hahn, Sister Grace, as well as the uh, Theology uh, Club. Uh, we thank them for inviting us and giving us the opportunity to present um, um, an American on, a, on the road to, um, to sainthood. And um, that would be uh, Fulton J. Sheen. Um, as uh, Fulton J. Sheen, uh, and most of you all might know him. Um, I hope you all know of him. If not, you will. Um, he was a um, world-renowned Catholic priest um, that, uh, lived, um, that did most of his work uh, between 1925, uh, when he first started writing his first book, um, uh, up until 1979, when he passed away. Um, he, he was a uh, well-renowned Catholic priest, a prolific writer, a gifted orator with um, God-given wisdom and in intellectual abilities. Um, so uh, to give you an overview of what we're going to be presenting today, my wife will um, come up and um, um, share with you the mission of the foundation of the Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen Foundation, which is based out of Peoria, Illinois, and then uh, she'll um, uh, share with you how we got involved with the foundation as well as the canonization for uh, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. Uh, next we'll see a one-hour DVD uh, that was uh, partially filmed here in Houston. Um, it's a documentary on the works, uh, the life and works of Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. Um, then I'll come back and uh, give you a brief history of the, of how the cause originated and um, its progress and where it stands and where it's going. Uh, exciting news uh, we've received recently, and, um, and lastly, uh, we'll um, let you know how you can get involved and how you can help uh, the cause uh, get uh, further along the road. Um, so I'll open it up to, to my wife so she can present um, the mission statement and how we got involved. Thank you. Um, I, I'd like to make a slight correction to our wonderful introduction because um, I do not have a degree <laughs> here at St. Thomas. I attended St. Thomas, but as a very good priest friend of the family said, I came out with an MRS degree. <laughs> <laughs> so. I just got busy with my vocation, which was to be wife and mother, and now a grandmother. Um, but I wanted to share with you the mission of the foundation, which we represent here. And it is very important because it is what we feel will help us in this cause that we're trying to accomplish in getting a saint uh, made. And the, bit, and the mission for the foundation is to work and make known the life, the works, and thoughts of Archbishop Sheen that will lead others to a deeper relationship with God and his church through, through the Archbishop's example and his intercessions. 
and then, of course, to advance the cause of canonization of Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen according to the process of the Catholic Church. So it's not just about raising funds, but it's about getting everyone to know who this man was and how we can relate to those things that he taught that were so dear to him. Well, that's a little bit about how our story begins uh, with Bishop Sheen, my husband especially, remembered quite a bit uh, seeing programs of his. I only knew about him. I, I don't recall ever having seen a show of Bishop Sheen, Life is Worth Living. But um, one summer, we were in Clearwater attending one of our sessions, working towards our certification for spiritual direction. And one of the presenters that taught a class in the evenings for a whole week was Father Andrew Apostoli. And many of you may be familiar with him. And he was here not too long ago presenting uh, a lecture himself on, on his most recent book. Father Andrew Apostoli is the vice postulator for the cause of Archbishop Sheen. He was ordained into the priesthood by Archbishop Sheen. So this is very close and dear to his heart. And when he gave the talk for the class we were taking, he would mention Archbishop Sheen quite often, and my husband became very enthusiastic about doing something, helping out in some way. And it seemed like one of the biggest things that they were in need of was money. And my husband said he wanted to give money, and I said, well, okay, fine. And so he did. A um, couple of things happened simultaneously. The first was that while we were there going through a two-week program, almost nonstop, we were in prayer, and we started both of us praying and asking Archbishop Sheen for his intercessions for someone in our family. Um, out of our four children, we had one child in particular that had, had uh, wandered away, sort of, wandered away from the faith anyway. Um, this child could go to church. She could attend all the wonderful family events that we had, but her heart was not there. She was living a life that nobody, no parent would be proud of. I don't think she was either. So we had tried many, many things, but this particular time we were asking Archbishop Sheen for his intercession. And one of the things that I learned about Archbishop Sheen was that on his coat of arms as a bishop, there's a Latin phrase on there that I did not know what it meant. I found out much later what it meant, and it has become very dear to me. And it says, it says um, that I may come to Jesus through Mary. And that meant so much to me. Uh, time went by. We, we gave our donation, and... We were very enthusiastic about what was happening and trying to learn what was uh, the progress. And in the meantime, we were contacted by the Bishop of Peoria and then the Monsignor, the executive director for the foundation, and asked us to consider becoming part of the board. And uh, we always seemed to say yes all the time. And then, I, and then I'm going like, oh no, more work. But um, God always finds a way to, to uh, make things happen. So we got involved and in the meantime, what I did not know then, but at that particular time period, there was something happening to this child of ours. She had gone to visit New York. And many of you may know this, that that is where Archbishop Sheen is buried, at uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral. She had gone to New York. She had found herself in a situation where she almost lost her life. And as she retold the story later, she says that she had always had remembered one of the things that we had instilled in her, and that was to always think of Mary, to call out to Mary. 
So while we were praying and asking Archbishop Sheen's intercession, she was calling out to Mary. And this beautiful young woman changed her life, and we didn't know it. I mean, she would tell us, Mom, I don't do that anymore. I don't go here anymore. I don't do this. I don't do that anymore. And I would just say, oh, okay. <laughs> but in the back of my head, I'd say, yes, I've heard that so many times. Slowly, I started to see the transformation taking place in her. And I cannot begin to tell you how many instances in her life, in each of our lives, in our own family, each member of our family, we have noticed the presence of God in our lives, but in a very, very special way, a more intimate way. And and then right behind that is something to do with Archbishop Sheen. Um, so this is a very, very uh, dear work for us. It is not work. It has been a true joy. And we're, we're, we're amazed that we're being allowed to participate, to see some of the fruits of this work. Not, and, and by that, I don't mean our work, but God's work. All that we do, all that we think, say, and do is for God's glory. Basically, what I'd like to do now is to, to go over the, you know, the, how the foundation started um, and how the cause began for his canonization. Sometime in 1999 or 2000, um, um, Father Apostoli, who you saw in the film, um, he was, he was uh, ordained by... Uh, the bishop, and uh, felt um, after his death uh, compelled to, to initiate the, the cause for sainthood. And uh, being very logical, he uh, initially uh, went to the um, Diocese of uh, New York, since that was the place um, where he, uh, where he uh, served as bishop as well as where he's buried. Um, he was turned down there, the, the request was turned down, and so subsequently, logically, he went to the next place, which was Rochester, where he also um, served as a bishop for three years, and there too he was turned down. So the next logical step for him uh, to pursue was where he was born in Illinois um, and where he was ordained. Uh, he went to the bishop of the Diocese of Peoria um, and asked uh, uh, Bishop Jinky if he would um, uh, pick up the cause or open the cause. And of course, Bishop in a flash or in an instant said, sure, of course. So um, in uh, September 9, 2002, uh, they submitted a, a request for, uh, to the Vatican for the approval um, to open up the cause. And uh, it took a whole year. By September 14, 2003, the Pope um, responded um, with, um, with a yes. And they opened the cause for, for, his, um, uh, for, the, for his sainthood or beatification and sainthood. Um, at that time, he was uh, uh, given the title of a servant of God. Um, and in a short time thereafter, which uh, the, the postulator of the cause was uh, uh, Dr. Ambrosi out in Rome, a uh, special talent um, to, to be the postulator, a uh, specially trained theologian, um, mentioned that, uh, that it was very unusual, very rare, uh, that in such a quick um, span of time um, between uh, his death and now, and uh, the time that uh, the cause was opened, that um, there were two reported, uh, alleged reported uh, miracles. We can't say that there were miracles until they're investigated and, and proven. So the two alleged uh, miracles were reported. And um, so th between 2003 uh, uh, and 2006, um, all the information was gathered, all the um, interviews were um, were done with the with the, the physicians in both cases, the nurses and priests and witnesses. And um, uh, one of the one of the um, uh, alleged miracles uh, occurred in Pittsburgh. It was um, it was an infant child that was born um, not breathing, um, uh, blue, cold, not uh, not responding to any stimulus, and remained that way for um, 91 seconds, or close to two minutes. Um, the parents being, I guess, in the room, they immediately um, uh, asked uh, uh, 
uh, Bishop Sheen to intervene, and uh, shortly thereafter, the you know the the child began to breathe, and they further prayed that they wouldn't have any any brain damage. And um, as it turned out, the, the child is still alive, healthy, and uh, without any brain damage, and so forth. Uh, the other one was a uh, was one in pure in uh, the diocese of Peoria. A uh, 79-year-old lady who um, uh, had um, a lung condition, lung disease, uh, what is called uh, empyema, which is a severe infection of the lung, which um, spread to, the, to one of the, the, the pulmonary arteries. And the procedure for curing that is to resect the, the infected area. When they got in there, they saw that, the, um, that the, not only the lung was affected, but the, but the pulmonary artery um, lining uh, to the point that the, the doctor, the physician, the surgeon, didn't feel that any kind of procedure could be done that would save uh, that vessel and that she was beginning to bleed out. So the, the husband who was out in the waiting area began to, to ask Fulton Sheen for intercession and uh, the doctor, um, I guess the last act, uh, started um, applying um, um, staples to the, to the um, artery and it, um, hoping that it would stop bleeding and it did. And the lady lived for six years after that, from 1999 to, to 2006. And it was in 2006 and um, July 30th and August uh, 6th, respectively, um, in um, uh, 2006, that the miracles, or the alleged miracles were, um, all the information was created up and sent to the Vatican for review. Uh, eventually, and they've been at the Vatican since then. In, that from what I understand is that they, they require that the the works of um, the life and works of uh, the, the uh, candidate for sainthood be be uh, studied and evaluated and reports written before the the actual um, miracles can can be evaluated if there are any like I said earlier the 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 miracles were kind of unusual because they came early in the in the in the process so. In 2008, um, Peoria, the foundation, uh, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen Foundation submitted all of the documentation, all of his writings, and he had a, a, a tremendous um, um, ability to, to write. He was a prolific writer. Um, he published 66 books, um, a tremendous number of pamphlets. Um, he wrote them in various journals. He had seven booklets, um, 14 pamphlets. Um, so all of that information had to be uh, gathered up along with all of his uh, radio um, recorded um, sessions as well as the TV, all of his TV um, uh, recorded presentations for the six years that he was on TV. All of that had to be created um, along with um, um, wit eyewitnesses that knew him and uh, documented uh, that uh, to his um, virtuous life and holiness. All of that was created in 2008, sent off to to the Vatican for it for it to be um, reviewed by scholars, uh, theologians, uh, philosophers, and uh, and uh, doctors. And so, in the past two years, that uh, all of that information has been um, reviewed and uh, reports for each one of those writings, uh, which were a tremendous amount of writings, and all of the all of his TV presentations and all of his radio presentations. All of those had to be assessed, and um, some theologian or some writer had to do a report on each one of those, either substantiating or, or denying the fact that he vir lived a virtuous, um, holy life. And as we recently found uh, that the all that uh, the the results of those um, those ri those uh, reviews of all that uh, documentation is very favorable. Um, to our surprise, um, most recently we, we heard from the postulator, uh, Dr. Ambrosi, that the, um, the, the um, Positio, which is the, the, the book or the, the, the documentation that can be presented to the Holy Father, um, that substantiates the, 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 his um, virtuous life and his holiness, has, has been prepared and is ready to be submitted earlier, earlier than what we thought. I mean, that's the good news for us. We thought it was going to be submitted sometime next year. We had a delay in our organization, and we found out that May 25th of this year, most likely we'll be presenting to the Holy Father, which is a tremendous, tremendous um, uh, news for us. Uh, we feel that he's on a fast track, and um, he's, you, you could see by, by all, of it, all the things that, were, that we saw on the screen that he's, uh, he was a remarkable man. So, um, God willing, um, uh, 
the Holy Father will accept it and see in his in his wisdom uh, that uh, declare him, um, you know, as a as a venerable. Um, once the the um, review of the of the miracles or the alleged miracles, once that it's truly substantiated, to one of the two is verified that it was uh, truly a miracle, then the Holy Father has uh, the take it upon himself to declare him either blessed. Then we wait for another miracle after that, that he's declared blessed, um, before he's declared um, a saint. And we have no doubt, I mean, uh, we, we have the faith that, that he will be declared a, a saint, a blessed and a saint soon. So we need, um, we need your prayers, um, their prayer cards, um, um, praying for the um, beatifications and canonization of Bishop Sheen. We would ask for you all to, to pray for that, and as well as um, we ask for, for, for any of you that would like to get involved in helping us in some of our committees and presenting, um, doing some various activities that we do here around town or around the state. Um, we, need, we need volunteers. Um, we also need um, uh, financial contributions if you ha have, your me have, have the desire to do that. Um, uh, most of all, we ask for your prayers. Um, I think um, I think now we can open up the questions. If we have any questions in reference to the presentation or what we had here today, I pray that um, you know we're, um, you, you learned something about Bishop Sheen and um, that um, he's a he's truly a. A saint that we need in America. He's truly, you know, someone that uh, that is worthy of, of being uh, canonized as a saint, as an American saint, the first um, bishop, priest, uh, American-born saint. So we're excited. Uh, we're 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 grateful for the the opportunity to be here to present to y'all. Um, you know, we thank God and we thank all of you all for giving us this opportunity. We can be reached um, through through the foundation. Um, we also have some cards um, that have our information for the for our local chapter, the Texas chapter. Um, so feel free to contact us. Does anyone does anyone have any questions? Yes, ma'am. The the ones uh, from television that he recorded between fifty one and fifty seven. Uh, you can go on YouTube. And you can find a whole list. You, you can call them by date or by name if you know the, the specific presentation. They're marvelous. But that's the best way to, to see them. They're also for sale in some of the, some of the bookstores. If you uh, request them, they can get them for you. Well, I go back to, you know, to my spirituality. I, I feel that all of us are destined to be saints. You know, God wants all of us to be saints. That's uh, how we w live our life. And if you look at uh, the, the, the job that the not only the Diocese of Peoria had, but the, the Vatican to review all of his books and uh, look at uh, and review all of the, uh, the documentation to see and establish if, if, there was a, if he lived a virtuous and holy life. I mean, the fact that he happened to have, to be gifted as a, as a prolific writer and a, and a gifted order and had that di you know, dynamic uh, way of presenting things. I mean, that's, that's an added gift. I mean, his, his holiness and the way he lived his life is the thing that they're focusing in on. Well, once again, uh, thank you very much, and uh, have a blessed evening. God love you.